Hey you guys, thanks for stopping by. If you're a fan of shows like Vikings, The Last Kingdom, and other cool historical warrior shows like that, you may have wondered at one point in time how historically accurate those hairstyles really are. Usually the answer to that is somewhere between eh and no. But real historical people did have interesting hairstyles, so that's what this video is going to focus on. We're going to learn some hairstyles from real ancient warriors. Particularly, we're going to explore the hairstyles of the Germanic Suebi, who were some of the Germanic peoples living at the same time as the Romans, the horse-mounted warriors, the Scythians, and of course the Vikings. All the info in this video is from archaeological and ancient historical texts, so I'll link to those sources that I'm using down below the video so that you can read them if you want to as well. Also, as a warning, I will be showing some pictures of mummies so that you can see their hair, so just be forewarned that you're going to see some dead bodies in this video. Alright, let's get started. Let's start with the Suebi, a loose collection of Germanic tribes that lived at the same time as the Roman Empire. These guys were expert hunters and fighters, but they were actually most famous for their iconic hairstyle, the Swabian knot. Famous then because classical sources say the young men from other tribes all wanted to copy it. And famous now because of a couple very well preserved bog bodies called the Osterby Man and Dadkin Man that have been found with this hairstyle intact. It's the OG man bun y'all, so let's learn how to do it. First, something to notice about this style. The hair is held in place by no pins or hair ties. This is likely because, in general, a less nutritious lifestyle back then meant that their hair was thinner than most of ours today. And while combing and grooming were common, the hair obviously wouldn't have been shampooed and conditioned like ours either. Sometimes they also used pine resin like a hair gel to hold things in place better. So take note that the thicker and smoother your hair is, the more difficult it will be to keep this knot from falling out. For this video, that's why I haven't washed my hair right before and why I'm adding dry shampoo. This will give my hair more grip. Anyways, to start the style, brush all your hair into a very high ponytail. Next, twist this tail of hair very tightly. When you can't twist it anymore without it folding down on itself, Grab a point about a third of the way up the length of the hair and fold the twist in half. You should now be holding a loop in the hair with one hand and the ends of the hair against the length of the twist with the other. Still holding the ends of the hair against the twist, make another loop with that length of hair. Then push the end of the hair, where the small twisty loop is, through this hole. Pull it through as tight as you can to tighten the knot. You can now let go of everything, and you'll have a knot with a little twisted loop poking through. If you find that your hair wasn't long enough the first try to pull the loop through the hole, or was too long for your liking, adjust how far along the original twist of hair to make the first bend. It'll take some practice to figure out exactly where along the hair to make the first fold. Making it farther down the length will give you more hair to work with. Farther up will use up excess length. Finally, if this bun still feels too loose for your liking because your hair is just too luscious, you don't have to avoid any hair ties. One bog body has been found that used cord on this hair knot to hold in place. So feel free to tie a hair tie around this bun or use bobby pins if you want. For the second style now, let's jump on over to the Eurasian steppes in Central Asia, where the ancient Scythians used to roam. These people were utterly fierce horse-mounted warriors, terrifying the Greeks and Persians, and perhaps even inspiring the Amazon warrior myth. In the Altai Mountains of Mongolia, an especially well-preserved group of burial mounds called the Pazaric Mounds have been found, which include the body of a male-mounted warrior with long braids. We'll learn how to do this style next. This style features two rope braids, but while normal rope braids are done with two strands, you can also do them with three or more to make them hold tighter and look more intricate. And that's what this mummy was wearing. So to start, divide off the top half of your hair and part it into three sections. Tightly twist one section a few times. When you do this, 
take note of which direction you twisted it in. Clockwise or counterclockwise. Because whichever direction you twist the individual strands, you should twist them together in the opposite direction. So because I twisted the first section clockwise, I'm going to wrap it around the other strands counterclockwise, i.e. passing it under the two other strands. For the next strand, I also twist it clockwise, and then pass it counterclockwise under the two other strands. Twist the third strand clockwise, and then around the others counterclockwise. You're now holding the first strand again. Continue this process, twisting the single strand one way, and then around the other strands in the other direction, until you braid up all the hair down to the ends. If you get to a point where it would be easier to bring the braid over your shoulder to continue braiding, feel free to do that. Just make sure you don't reverse the direction of your braiding accidentally. When you get to the ends of the hair, tie off with some string or a small hair elastic. Make another braid just like this with the rest of your hair. If you've never done a three strand rope braid before and are finding it hard to do, you can also do a normal two strand rope braid. It just won't be as tightly wound. I'll do this second braid with just two strands in order to demonstrate that. When I get to the ends and tie off the braid, you can see how the top braid looks more like the mummy's tight rope braids. So practice that if you want to be very historically accurate, or just use two strands if that's what you prefer for yourself. When you finish both of the braids, you've replicated the Scythian Horseman's Warrior Braids. I also quite like the look of further braiding these two rope braids together so that you have just one intricate braid in the back. That's not how the mummy wore his braids, but feel free to get creative. Finally, let's talk Viking hair. Not many male bodies with preserved hair have been found in the Vikings historical range. However, there is artwork showing men with shoulder length hair or long plaited hair. Also, contemporary writings from Irish monks or Islamic scholars that came into contact with the Vikings sometimes describe their hair, with high class men having long hair that is either loose, braided just in front, or all tied back into a long plate. So we'll recreate a wealthy Viking warrior's hairstyle based on these descriptions. First, notice how if you tip your head forward and let all your hair hang past, it gets all in your face. This wouldn't be good for visibility when working or fighting. So first, grab a chunk of hair from in front, like this, divide it into three strands, and braid these strands normally to the ends. Repeat with a chunk of front hair on the other side of your face. If your hair is particularly long, you don't need to tie off the ends because small braids hold themselves together well when they're long. If your hair is on the shorter side, you can tie the ends of the braids with a little hair tie or string to keep them together. Now, if you still feel like there is hair getting in your face, you can do a second set of braids directly behind the first ones. Grab a chunk of hair, split into three strands, and braid all the way to the ends like you did the first set of braids. There, now it's easier to see. If your hair is around shoulder length, you can stop here. If you have longer hair like the most powerful Viking men would have had, you can further braid your hair out of the way to prepare for a fight. Simply gather up all your hair at the lower back of your head, small braids included, and divide it all into three strands. Braid this hair together down your back. When you reach the ends, tie off with some cord or hair tie. Finishing that up gives you an authentic historical Viking style. This look, along with the Swabian knot and Scythian braids, are the real hairstyles worn by ancient warriors more than a thousand years ago. So next time you see a show about the Vikings or the Roman Empire, you'll know what these men really looked like, and you can try it out for yourself. Thanks so much for watching! If you liked this tutorial for men's hair, I have more that you can check out on my YouTube channel Sivu Plates. You can also stop by my Facebook page Sivu Plates Hairstyling to show off your own pics or request looks. That's it for now, hope to see you again!